This is taking too long. All right, what's up guys? I have a product review for you today. I'm going to review the most popular ISUP inflatable stand-up paddleboard that I could find on Amazon. This is the Serene Life 10 foot by 30 inch by six inch thick stand-up paddleboard. Why did I buy this? Well, I realized that for me to get into foil boarding, I need to get in better shape. The foil board that I built back there, which I haven't created the video on yet, but anyways, coming eventually, that is like six foot five. And I've had it out for a paddle. I can stand on it, I can paddle on it okay. I have a little bit of stand up paddle board experience, but it's a little bit too short to just paddle on flat water. It doesn't track very well because it's so short. It's really meant for wave riding or wing boarding or foil boarding. If you're watching this review, you probably want to know about this board. So I figured I'd give my impressions on, well, this inflatable ISOP. And I also want to know if I can surf this because I don't really do a lot of uh, flat water paddling, but uh, I really want to see if I can surf this, even though this is not made for surfing. Okay, let me go over what it came with. It obviously came with the ISOP. Uh, a little bit hard to get it all in frame, but you can see the nose here. It came with a pump and this pump has two settings. When you're first pumping this up, pump it up on the dual. So on the, when you pump up and down, it inflates. But once it gets up to around five PSI, I recommend switching the valve on the back and so that it's only single action. So you pump going down much easier on your arms and shoulders on your body when pumping it up. And also this pump folds down really nice and small. The handles come off on the top. It also comes with a coil leash, which actually is still in the package for me. Seems like it's okay quality, especially if you're just doing flat water paddling, it's probably fine. This here is almost like a, a luggage belt to wrap around when you fold up the, and deflate this board to hold it together to get it in the bag. This emergency repair kit comes with, I believe this is a valve removal tool for the valve at the rear of the board. A couple pieces of PVC that match the color of the board itself in case you need to do a repair. My kit unfortunately did not come with the glue to go with this. And I wrote the company and they're supposed to send me a two with the glue manual, a card to say that if you register this, you get an extended warranty and you also get a free gift if you leave a review on Amazon. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, it also comes with a fin that I've already installed in the rear of the board. The, the fin is, for those of you who aren't familiar with surfing, it's what's called a Bane box or a USA box. And basically it has this pin and then you have a spot where a screw goes through and it screws into the back of the board. These are some of my other fins. If you're going to try to look for a replacement fin, don't get one with the pin in the back. You gotta make sure that this will fit in the, in the fin box in the back. What I do like about the single fin that came with this board is that it's a rigid hard fin. So much more solid instead of being flexible. A lot of these inflatable, especially the cheaper ones, inflatable paddle boards uh, come with a very flexible fin. The two side fins on this, the side bites, those unfortunately are soft, but they're just to help with tracking, I think. All right, let's talk a little bit about the specs and details about this board. On Amazon, this thing has got like over 9,000 reviews. So this thing is popular. I paid about $450. It fluctuates anywhere from 430 Canadian all the way up to like 490 to 500. So keep an eye on it. The price does fluctuate on this. Now, as I've already gone through what it comes with, this kit comes with everything you need. The only thing you need if you're going flat water paddling is probably like a PFD. Um, maybe a whistle, depending on where you are. It's made from PVC. I don't know how durable it is, the longevity. All the reviews I've read seem pretty good. 
I've left this inflated. I've deflated it a couple times. The valve seems to be holding the seams. I don't know if they're welded seams or if they're glued seams. I think that makes a difference. Welded seams obviously would be better. Glued seams, probably not as good, but I don't know which one it is and I couldn't find any documentation whether it was welded or glued. The other thing is it uses that drop stitch technology and you see all these little dimples on the board and there's like fibers that are between the bottom and the top layer of PVC that I think when inflated helps give this board a lot of rigidity. Now that's the other thing, this board being six inches thick, it's a, it's a beefy boy, it is very rigid. I'm not that heavy, but I could totally see that this, um, you could support quite a bit of weight on this board being it's six inches thick. It has these bungee cords and tie downs, which are really handy. I actually installed a GoPro mount on here by zip tying a piece of polycarbonate and then sticking a GoPro mount to it. Seems to work well, that's how I've been able to capture a little footage with it. Let's talk about the flat water performance. I've had this out for a bunch of paddles. I've been able to learn a different, few different paddle techniques using this and it was a really inexpensive way for me to get into stand up paddle boarding. One of the key benefits of it being so such a thick board is for flat water performance when you're paddling you are, do sit higher up so you're kind of planing on top of the water when you're going. Now it does have a wider nose so there's a little bit more um, nose or board to push through the water, especially if it's windy. Also, because you're sitting a little higher on the board, uh, it has a tendency to be a little corky or a little bit tippy because it is thicker. But with that, it is more buoyant and it is quite wide being at 32 inches. I know they list it as 30 inches wide on the website, but when inflated, the rails actually are uh, 32 inches wide across at the middle. Also loading this onto the car on my roof racks because I leave it inflated, um, ratcheting it down, it held up, no issues going on the highway with this. It's not floppy, especially when you inflate it to the recommended pressure of 15 PSI. The EVA deck is very grippy I found. Even being out in the ocean, I found no issues with the EVA grip. It's just your standard diamond pattern. It seems to work great. So besides just trying to get in shape for paddle boarding, for foil surfing, the other thing is I wanted to know, can you surf a uh, inflatable paddleboard? And so I took it out on a small day when it wasn't too windy. Uh, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've gone stand up paddle boarding. Hence why I'm probably not ready for uh, foil paddle surfing. So taking it to the beach, I tried it out in one to two foot waves. It was very flat, unfortunately. Probably the best thing anyway, but I want to see if you could catch waves with this thing. So normally when surfing, you can, especially if the surf is small or if it's big, if your board doesn't fit in the pocket of the wave, you can angle your board and kind of ride the rail into it when you're catching the wave instead of riding straight down the face and then bottom turning. With such a round rail, because the rail is exactly the same from the nose all the way to the tail, there's no hard rail for releasing water at the tail on this. The side rails are fully round like that and the water has a tendency to suck up like this. When I try to paddle for a smaller wave, when I paddle on an angle into it, I have to be really careful that I don't get sucked into the wave because it has a tendency to, to the water just wraps around the rail. So yeah, it's very, very corky. Um, I like to akin it to surfing a bar of soap, like a bar of ivory soap that floats. That's what this is kind of like. Now, having said that, you totally can surf this, especially, I had it out in some choppier surf. It, you can ride whitewash with it, no problem. Although it's a little bit hard to manage a board so big and kind of floaty. It's not like my 10 foot longboard I have up in the ceiling. Uh, that is a little bit more easier to manage. This is just so unwieldy, but it is very light. Now, with that being light, also it gets blown around in the wind very easily. And it's also hard to stand the paddleboard in the wind. Now the other thing is when you fall off this board, uh, it's hard to get up back up on it because of the thickness of the board. Even climbing up on the tail, I kind of had to haul myself up on it. On the side, I can use the handle to pull myself up, but uh, it does get very tiring, especially I was wearing a winter wetsuit when I took this out for to give it a go. So let's quickly go over some dislikes and likes. What I dislike about this board, the paddle that came with it is heavy. Actually, I forgot to talk about the paddle, which I have right here. So also this comes with it and it comes apart like that. And it's three pieces, this part and then this extension. And it extends all the way 210 centimeters or roughly 83 inches. 
Uh, the paddle's okay. I got a different paddle because this is so heavy. So yeah, the paddle, nah, and the quality on the paddle not so great, but it is nice that it did come with the kit. The other thing is, is there's no grab handle on the front like some boards. So I had to add my own piece of rope here because it is handy sometimes, especially when you're coming up on shore, to have a place to grab this and there's no place to grab it. So I added a piece of rope. That definitely was a big improvement, but it would have been nice for them to glue or weld on a handle just up at the nose here. At the tail, you can use the leash cord in order to kind of manipulate that. On the side, you have the handle. Okay, the other thing is, and this is less about the board, about a dislike about the board, and more about it's misleading that they want you to go and register to get a free seat. And what I think that does is it incentivizes people to leave a positive review. So that 4.5 star review, it's probably real, but it could be misleading. So I don't know. The other thing is also being in Canada, this does not apply to me apparently. It only applies to people in the States to get the free seat, um, which by the way, that's what the Ford, the D-rings on the deck of the board are for. You can tie down a seat on it and use it like a kayak. Okay, so the likes, well, I've already mentioned it. It's a full kit, comes with everything you need to get into the water. The fin mount seems solid. It's a USA fin type of mount. I like that. It's a rigid fin, so the tracking will be great. And because it's solid, uh, it might be okay for surf performance, even though the rails on this board are, this board is not meant for surfing. The overall flat rocker of this board makes it great in flat water. For surfing, well, if the waves are small, you can get going fast and you can catch the tiniest little bumps with this. That's one thing I have noticed and I really like that I can keep this in the car for days when the waves aren't really cooperating and I still wanna get out in the ocean and have some fun. This board will totally do it. The bungee cord is nice. The D-rings up here, I can clip my water bottle and various things on it. Um, so that's really handy. And it is fairly light for a 10 foot long board of this size. I weighed it, it comes in just the board itself at 20 pounds or 21 pounds with the, with the fin itself. Um, and it folds down into a nice backpack that you can just throw in your car or hike with it if you have a location that you wanna you know, go paddle boarding. That's the most amazing thing about these inflatable paddle boards now is you can, if you live in an apartment, you can still go out and even paddle board or even try surfing. It's made it a lot more accessible to a wide range of people. And the other thing is, is I do recommend getting one of these if you have a compressor. This is an adapter that you can hook up to a regular uh, pump, like a bicycle pump or a compressor, and you can just inflate this board that way. My friend who has this board also, they bought a, a electric compressor because it's just so much easier than using the pump because your arms will burn after using that, especially once you get past five PSI. It does take a little bit more elbow grease to get it pumped up. But using the pump, I have inflated it a few times and it takes anywhere from, depending on how fast you pump, maybe from three to six minutes, probably to pump it up if you go really hard at it. But the pump works really well. And also remember that the gauge isn't gonna read any PSI until the board looks really inflated. I read some reviews where people said, hey, the gauge didn't start reading until the board was pumped up. What's up with that? Well. If you think about it, how that the physics of it work, you actually need the board completely pumped up before you read any pressure on a surface. So keep that in mind. So let's summarize this up. This video is long enough. Do I like it? Do I think it's worth it? I 100% think it's worth it, especially given the cost and what you get and the size of the board you get to be able to go out and just have some fun on flat water, possibly a little bit of surfing. You totally could surf this. Uh, I'm gonna try some more and maybe report back to see how I make out. Also, it's inspired me to possibly make an understand up paddle board. So stay tuned for that. Although most likely that video won't be until next year. I totally think this was worth the money, except for that 4.5 star review is a little misleading. But overall, I'd give this board a pass. I am so intrigued by this inflatable technology that I noticed on Costco, they have an inflatable surfboard uh, that they sell uh, made by Body Glove. And I think I might order that and try that out and report back to you guys on what that's like. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long and too rambly. So for those of you guys who are interested in the, the most popular ISEP on Amazon, well, it's the Serene Life. The name is a little hokey, but I think it's pretty good. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up so other people can find it and I will see you guys in the next video.